Okay, so here we are talking to Dan Weeks, and this is our uh, Cal Poly Seven Habits Celebrity Interview. And Dan, um, it's really nice to have you here. I think, and if I remember correctly, yes, last year, you were the first interview of the quarter. Yes, this and I decided year, to do the other end because they'll know more of the concepts. <laughs> yeah, this, this year you're on the other end. And so thanks for- That was a uh, conscious it, decision. Yeah, well, you know, this is being proactive, right? You get to choose. I, I send you that list of open slots and uh, and, and you made uh, you made a choice. So thanks, thanks for doing that. So, um, well, let's see, uh, Dan, uh, I got to apologize. I'm, I'm a little bit discombobbled. I'm over here in Tucson for a, a, a Lean Enterprise Institute um, Summit. So I got a bunch of my Lean buddies are here and we're, um, we're working on some stuff, and I didn't do a lot of great preparation on on your interview. So what I'm going to ask you, Dan, Dan, you know, it's always kind of interesting to see what you're up to right now. Yeah. So, so let me go ahead and push it that way. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you're up to. Okay. So um, I'm a computer science grad from Cal Poly a long time ago. Um, I'm old enough that I use my student loan to buy an Apple II computer. <laughs> and that was my entire student loan amount. But at the time, once I got my Apple II, I can actually connect into the computers on campus as, a, as opposed to sitting next to the computer and do all my work sitting right at the computer. But so I worked for... When I graduated in computer science at the time, there were only two really big tech companies that everyone really wanted to work for. It was IBM and HP. I interviewed with both. IBM was suits and HP was first name and blue jeans. So I picked that. Um, I worked there for 25 years. <laughs> it used to be people, whatever company they started with, they stuck with. And I think now I, I have two millennial children. It's like two or three years is more than norm. But hey, late hey, in hey, my hey, career. Hey, hey, I'm going to interrupt you. So before, I, you know, I remember, like, I also work for HP, right? And that's And that's sort of, you know, we both kind of drank the Seven Habits Kool-Aid. We did. Know, back, back in our days in HP. And you reminded me about, you know, HP being a first name uh, company. And, and I was always just so grateful and impressed by that, that, you know, that, you know, you could walk up to, you know, Bill and Dave Packard and they were Bill and Dave, yep. you know, and, um, you know, it seems like, you know, so, sometimes we, we miss that in some of the cultures that we, we work with, you know, and I, I, you know, I don't know exactly what seven habits about that, but, but, but it, it seems to fit for me. I think that what I learned at HP is it was really give people a chance to do good and they probably will um, right. as opposed to put a lot of check and balances around the person so they don't do bad. <laughs> right. Right. And, and this is sort of, the, you know, kind of assuming the best in people. And, it was, and that, that was, that was the way it was. Yeah. So, it, 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 go ahead. Well, and then I was always an entrepreneur at HP. Um, HP would want to do this and I have to get the data and said, well, don't we want to do that? And as I'd been in HP longer, they'd start listening to me more. So I got HP to buy a company of 10 people, but um, I had to talk to all these people, but I, I convinced them to do it. And we paid a lot of money for that company. So I was thinking, okay, I got to start a company. <laughs> so I became the integration manager. And then um, I ended up starting a company tied to 401ks. Um, I left HP. I started that. I was an entrepreneur, build up the company, and then we we finally sold it. And then I came back to San Luis Obispo because I really love entrepreneurship. Um, I became the entrepreneur in residence for Cal Poly's new business incubator downtown. I teach entrepreneurship um, at Cal Poly. We have this really cool senior project that it's 17 business majors and 25 engineers and over three quarters, you pitched in investors at the end of the third quarter. Wow. But for most business majors, they've never worked with mechanical engineers for three quarters before. And so that's pretty fun. You can take the normal two quarter 
senior yeah. project. And Eric was the department head when I started on all this, but it's fun because it's more real world. So I do that. So one of my roles, I'm the entrepreneur in residence for the new business incubator. That's a volunteer role. I teach at night um, entrepreneurship, the senior capstone series. And my day job is I work for a company that does tech boot camps. Um, we do it in coding, cybersecurity, DevOps. We had 4,000 grads last year. And in three months, we can take someone who barely knows coding. And uh, our number one destination for our coding bootcamp grads is Bloomberg. And we have 100 of them at Bloomberg. So it's very disruptive. Um, but, you know, it's our typical bootcamp grad is 10 years experience in something else. So they have the people skills. And then we put the tech skills on top. So that's what I do. But in my core, I'm an entrepreneur. I happen to be an ed tech entrepreneur right now. And that's what I really love. Um, but if people who know me just know I'm, I'm a pretty positive person that just really wants to help people picture themselves doing something they probably thought they couldn't do. I'm usually the cheerleader and other people will highlight what they need to work on and I'll, I'll look to catch them what they're doing right. Well, well, you know, and then, Dan, uh, you know, one of the things I've sort of learned over the years, and, and I, I really appreciate people that have been exposed to Seven Habits and are using this, you know, in their careers and their lives, you know, that sounded to me like, you know, you got a, a very good grounding in what your purpose is, right? You know, I have my, my Simon time. Sinek why statement, and I'll tell you what it is, and it, it drives me. I want yeah. tens of thousands of people to have had head of household tech jobs that would not have happened without my direct involvement. Right. Tens of thousands. And that drives me. That doesn't say who I work for. But if I'm not making progress on a regular basis toward tens of thousands of people that wouldn't wouldn't have jumped from a $20 an hour job to head a household without something that I was involved with, it it, it drives me. Right. You know, so so I was looking at my watch. I said, "Okay, I, we 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 can wind up, you know, blowing an hour on this." So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm gonna set a timer so that so that we don't uh, do that. Um, I'm sure we would enjoy it more than than the students would. But tell tell me a little bit about your sort of origin story on Seven Habits. So, like, okay. where, where where did you pick this up, or how how did that happen for you? So. Inkjet printers, which when you think inkjet printers, you think HP. When I was early in my career at HP, there was no such thing as an inkjet printer. Laser printers had just started. So I was with the inkjet group and we really had to start thinking about how are we going to organize ourselves? What are we going to, how are we going to hold each other accountable? What's this framework? And I'll, to me, a lot of what the seven habits is, is a framework of who you are and how you interact with people and how others can hold you accountable for, you know, that uh, begin with the end in mind. I never see you do that. <laughs> <laughs> but so we did, you know, I learned it all. Um, Stephen Covey's organization came to, I was in Vancouver, Washington. One day a month, we learned one habit. Mm -hmm. um, and then part in the class, and I've showed Eric this, is you know the the golden goose and the eggs um yeah. in the in the class i took you can earn those so i literally have a golden goose and two golden eggs in my office to really think about that the capacity for work and you know that the whole idea of you're going to kill the goose and still have the eggs so right. that was good but i think the whole thing about and I, i'm honest here the seven habits affected me more than anything anything I ever did related to work, because this idea a private victory precedes public victory is huge. Um, there's no trick in seven habits, it's character. It's when everyone's not watching, what are you doing? What are you doing? What's your discipline? You know, the, 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 the seven habits, like for me, one of my big rocks is I ran my first marathon when I turned 50. So I got used to training in the morning. So every week, my big rock is I, between jogging and walking, I do two marathons. And so I do that distance. I do 
50 miles every week, but I get up at 4.30 in the morning and I'm used to it. I like it. No one bugs me. I run at five. And so I do three miles running because I don't want to blow out my knees. And then I do five miles walking and I do it every day. But I've learned as my big rock, I do it. I know a lot of people who try all these self-help things and they can't do it like a month later. I've done this for nine years now, yeah. but it's because it's a big rock and I can do it anywhere. Um, but I, at the end of the week, I'm saying, did I catch up? Did I make it? Do I need to do more walk? Do I need to do more run? But some of these things are fake it until you make it. When you've done it enough, when I don't do it, I miss it. But initially I didn't want to do it. But at some point, some of your best habits become something that you just love. Right. You usually don't start that way. Yeah, interesting. So I want to encourage the, the students, if you've got a, a question for Dan on uh, anything, um, entrepreneurship, seven habits, um, how to run a marathon. Um, sounds like we've got some, some uh, depth of expertise here. Um, so what... You know, you know, so so in some of your you know your multiple roles, right? And I'm just always sort of blown away by all the things you're trying to do and uh, and you know the effectiveness with which you do them. Um, where do the seven habits sort of come in? Is is it explicit? Is it implicit? Is it is it kind of just in the water of your life, or um, you know, you explained I'll it give, in the big. I'll box. give you an example. Just yeah. teaching teaching last night. Um, you know, our senior project is three quarters and a lot of the students have a hard time saying, what are their milestones between today and what you're, what are you going to show investors? Cause we have like venture capital people talk to them at the end of next quarter and they don't know how to do it. So I started with, okay, let's begin with the end in mind. What do you want to be able to say at this date? Just that's all. I, I don't care about the steps. Start with that. And then you just go backwards. But it's a lot of the Covey stuff. But if you don't know where you're going, any road will work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, but but, and I can say like with my daughter, my daughter is an entrepreneur. She started a company. She's about ready to start another one and she needed a break. And I told her, and she knows all about the seven habits, sure. but the sharp and the saw is, what are you going to do during your break in each of those four areas? Don't yeah. just sit around. Think about, I really want to grow. This is a chance I can grow when I don't have chance. But if without a framework, you might just be watching TikTok the whole time. Right. right. But the but the sharpen this saw is really interesting. Um, I think the biggest thing that helps me is really thinking about what my weakest habit is and I know what it is. Mm -hmm. It's seek first to understand and then to be understood because I'm an extrovert and I wanna finish someone's sentence. <laughs> and I know that I need to work on that. But I think the biggest thing that you can do when you and your friends know the seven habits is be honest about which one you need to work on. Yeah, Because when you do that, like, I've worked in multiple organizations that when they do performance evaluations, year-end performance evaluations that everyone hates, but if you do them as the seven habits, it's useful because they really say, okay. And because the Covey organization has tens of thousands of data points. They said, oh, by the way, you're in the lowest 30th percentile and think win-win. And it's actually these two attributes of think win-win that are hurting you. You don't, you're, you, you don't get the hair up in the back of your neck that someone's just being hard on me. It's logical at that point, not emotional. Yep. But it's helpful because you can think as a manager, if one of my employees has that, it's like, okay, what can we do in the next year? What can I do as your manager to get you in situations? So when we do that same, it's all anonymous who fills it out. Right. The next year, you'll be in the middle on that. Because a lot of what I've also learned is, we're all wired different. The mm -hmm. worst thing I can do with people is find out you're just not naturally a good something and focus all my development on you is to get you average. 
As an entrepreneur, I want to know what you're really good at. And you're going to spend 95% of the time at that. Yeah. But your weak areas won't be real problems, but they're still going to be a weak area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to make them better. I just, I think it's a way, it's a, it's a way just of thinking that doesn't feel someone's picking on me. Yeah. So ask me questions. I mean, I, I I've been doing this for a long time, but I but I think I find that when I'm mentoring and coaching, it's often tied to one of the habits. Yeah. And, and that would be, you know, sort of an aspirational maybe goal for some of the students in this class as they go out into the workforce and things. You know, they know the seven habits and they can use those to mentor their uh you know, subordinates, their peers, maybe even their bosses, right, to, to make them better, right, or, or, or more effective as an organization or team. Right? Well, who has a question for Dan? Help us out here. What, what do the class think is the hardest habit? Yeah, why don't we do, why don't we do a little, uh, we'll do a little chat exercise. So compose in the in the chat the answer to the question, what is your most challenging habit? But don't hit send. Don't hit send so you don't get to see everybody else's answer. Oh, that's good. So I'll, I'll count you down. I'm going to do the reveal. <laughs> right that, well, yeah, just put, put in what habit you have the most challenge with in the chat, and I'm going to count you down. So ready? Three, two, one, hit send. Okay, let's see what we got here. Habit seven, habit one, habit six. Yeah, we just went through that habit six exercise. Yeah. That's, that's that's a gnarly habit, boy. You don't want to you don't want to start that one out as your first one, or at least I don't. Habit seven. Okay, sharpen the saw. First things first. Looks like we got a good spread from folks. Yeah, same. You know, the nice thing when I see that kind of diversity, Dan, is boy, we can help each other, right? So um, maybe some people are strong where others are weak and- We all um, are. Yeah. Um, so anybody wanna to, want to share with us a little bit, um, you know, if those are the, the habits you find most challenging, share with us a little bit, like why? Why, why, why do you find your particular habit challenging? Is it one particular aspect? So Dan was was pointing out like in the assessment that we do for each one of the habits, you know, they've kind of broken them down into, you know, specific maybe aspects of them. Um, somebody, uh, we're, we're towards the end of the quarter. We're we're ready to share with each other. Nobody nobody's going to be uh, nobody's going to be beating you up for this. Yeah, and Vita, help us out here. Yeah, I said habit seven. Um, I feel like for college students, or I guess when, even when you work full time, especially for college students, you have a lot of stuff like spread throughout the day. So you have like working part time, but then you're also expected to take classes from 6 to 8 p.m. and then study after. We have a lot of times such as like even just things like journaling for a certain amount of time per day. I feel like if, you know, last minute things come up or things from your extracurriculars come up and you have to like compensate for that. A lot of times your daily habits can be taken away. And if you find journaling like a part of your daily victory, then it's just, it's kind of taken away. So I feel like it's really hard sometimes to always be making sure you have all of those, um, I guess like personal stuff and personal time every day. Yeah. yeah. So Invita, are, are you a journaler? I'm trying to get into it because right. of this class, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that that would be an aspirational thing for me. I I, I admire people that, that do that consistently. I think it's a real valuable thing. I'll give you an example. I'm 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 working through this right now. There's, I've played guitar and bluegrass banjo. I've done those things in the past, and there's this guitar method that's ten minutes a day, and all Mondays is one type of things like warm up and the next day is le is learning licks and so on i can't do make sure it happens every day 
what I have to do, the accountability to me is when I go to bed on Sunday night, I'm all caught up. Mm. And I, I think sometimes if you can feel like your unit is a week, not a day, then you can make it work. Mm. But, but sometimes when it's a day, you're too hard on yourself. Yeah. And, and a lot of what I like about the class is he says, if you do it three of the five days, you're still making great progress. So he doesn't make you feel bad. But on Sunday night, the, the times that I get all caught up, I feel like I was successful this week as opposed to feeling what a slacker. You know, I missed Tuesday and Wednesday. Good point. Thank you, Dan. And thank you, Andita. All right. Others, others want to share a little bit about habits that they struggle with or specific aspects of habits. What do you think? Yeah, Dan, thanks for asking that question. I think, uh, you, you know, there, there's something about, you know, and even it's just a little sort of type it in the chat, but you actually had a formulate a response, you know, what is the habit I'm most challenged with? And now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to leave this class sort of thinking about that a little bit, you know, you know, what's, what's the things that I've got to work on to, to become a little bit better. But becomes more practical of too many classes that I've taken right after the class. I think it was the best class ever. And then a week later, I don't even remember what it was. Right. Um, but if you have something on an ongoing basis of, yeah, I still really need to work on this. It's still my number one. Yeah. But but you don't beat yourself up on it. You realize we all are different. But you really want to say, gosh, a year from now, I really want that to be at least middle of the road as opposed to the bottom 20%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get you. All right, Dan. Well, well this has been really good. Um, this was fun. We, we can uh, compare notes sometime about what it was like for you to share at the beginning of the quarter versus the end of the quarter and whatnot. Um, I've had a real good time, uh, you know, teaching these particular students and also, of course, you know, talking to you over the years has been, uh, has really sort of helped and been in inspirational to me too. So I appreciate that. Any of the students who want, you know, you can see me under the OCOB for entrepreneurship, my email is there, but I'm happy to help you any way I can on seven habits or entrepreneurship or anything else. My my favorite thing to do is just mentor people who are trying to figure out what path should I take. I I, I love doing that. Well, thanks. This was fun and I appreciate the invite and I look forward to doing okay. it again. Okay, I'm not gonna let you go for one more uh, question. And that is what is your last or, or one last piece of advice you could give to these soon to be, you know, seven habits people that we're going to unleash into the world. What piece of advice would you give them? I think you have to just keep it front and center at some regular basis. So even if it's a New Year's resolution. Mm -hmm. And what I would do is expand what I said earlier. Continue to excel at so it's the positive and continue to make progress at the one you need to work with. But I think, you know, New Year's might be a time that once a year. So think 10 years from now that at least once in a year, you're thinking about two things tied to the seven habits. Because believe me, if you do it, then it's going to come up throughout the year. But it just can't be a book that's on your. What helped me is I would listen to the book on CD many times every time i listen to dr covey talk something else at the time was interesting to me but even if what you do is once a year you just take a few minutes to just think about that make make that the simple habit that i'm going to just do it once a year yeah. that's what i would say because otherwise it's going to be yet another book yet another class that if you don't get your brain to kind of take the cobwebs off, it's going to start getting foggy on you. Yeah. Yeah. Use this stuff, right? Yeah. So, all right, Dan. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.
to say, to say goodbye and thank you, we have a little tradition here. So we're going to take the spotlights off if I can do that successfully. And we're going to get got it. <laughs> got it. Okay. And if we could have everybody that's able to turn on their video, go ahead and, and turn on, give Dan a little wave and a thank you. Show them that there's like real people that he's affected <laughs> in his uh, discussion and conversation there. Thank you, Dan. And thanks. Uh, we will we will see you uh we'll see you around. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.